Hey, I'm Freddy, and this week I'm going to show you how I made a hazmat suit out of a tarp. So for the past couple weeks, San Francisco has been under a shelter-in-place quarantine because of COVID-19. Since quarantine started, I've been in some dire need of some good PPE for when I go to the grocery store. And I need a good reason to touch up on my sewing skills. So obvious conclusion, hazmat suit. I've always wanted one, so what better time to start making one? I started this just as a fun project for a costume, but with a few modifications, this is a pretty practical form of PPE but this is nowhere as close as being as effective as an N95 mask, so you shouldn't just go out in public in just this hazmat suit. I'll be making the first one in this video, and I plan on making at least two more after that. I'm gonna change each draft and make improvements to the patterns as I go along, at least until I know what I'm doing, because I need a little practice sewing, and I need a little practice modifying and changing patterns. So to start, I picked up a standard disposable paint suit. I started by dissecting the paint suit first, pulling apart all the seams so I can have the patterns ready. The only changes I can make so far were eyeballing a larger hole for the neck and cutting off the elastic waistband. It's a no-brainer, but I made sure to mark pieces so I know what's what and mark points where I know they should connect. To make a better pattern, I'd laid down some paper and taped what patterns I did have and traced them over. Using a compass, I outlined the seam allowance, the area between the fabric edge and the stitching line, 5 eighths around the entire pattern. Lastly, I made sure everything was labeled and then I cut out the patterns with my box cutter. When all the fabric stores are closed and you hate buying fabric online like me, you have to improvise. So I'm just going to use a blue tarp that I pulled from storage to make the suit. This tarp's made of Tyvek, which is the perfect material for the kind of suit I'm going to make. A good number of hazmat suits are already made from this material, so the look, sound, and hold of the fabric is already on point. I lay and pin my pattern pieces down on the tarp so I can trace them over. I make sure to label the tarp pieces and its connecting points before I remove the pattern. I only make that mistake once. Once I cut out my tarp pieces, I lay down some more tarp, flip over my pattern, and do everything again for the other half of the suit. Now I have the beginnings for the main body of the suit, and I can break out my sewing machine. Now that I have the basic suit done, I can start patterning the big stuff, and this is where the challenge sets in. To pattern the backpack and the giant head, I'm going to make a form out of foam core and go from there. When patterning more geometric shapes like that, there's a fly. I prefer using foam core to pattern more geometric shapes like these as opposed to cardboard. I buy foam core in bulk at the dollar store, you can get a lot of sheets for a good price, and it's just something great to have around. I'm feeling lucky, so I'm going to freehand the head form out of two pieces of foam core. I'm basically drawing out a big cylinder with divots to rest on the shoulders. Using my T-square as a spacer, I score the foam core about an inch and a half all the way down. Now I just bend each score like I would with corrugated cardboard and voila, we have a nice bendy curved piece of foam core. To make the other half I just flip this side around so my scores don't go in the wrong direction and trace it. And now I just repeat the last couple steps that I already told you. Now I tape my two halves together and now I have a cylinder. Now I just have to make a top so it holds its shape. Not that it really matters, but to make sure it's symmetrical, I trace and cut off one half. 
Then I use my offcut as a template to trace and cut off the other side. Now I'm just going to tape and secure that on the top and that's looking pretty good so far. Lastly for the head form I'm just going to cut and bend a strip of foam core to put on top just so it's not too flat. Alright now for the backpack. I freehand a curve to cut out so that the top butts up against the back of the head form. I cut it in half because my plan is to have the backpack be my point of entry with overlapping flaps that can be closed with velcro. For the rest of the backpack, I freehand an angled box-like flap shape. Then I flip it over and trace it so I can get the other half. Now I'm just taping this up just to get a general idea of the shape and it's starting to look like something. The flap test fit works pretty well so I'm happy. Everything seems to fit pretty perfect, so on to patterning the head. As far as how to cut the tarp to get the shape of the head that I want, it took me a little bit to figure out. My partner, Alora, suggested I just take a look at a hoodie and pattern it off from there, which is exactly what I did. I'm going to divide this up into three sections. I start by pinning a piece of tarp to half of the front of the hood. Then I clean up my edges so it matches my form. And to avoid any confusion, I make sure to label. Moving on to the back side, I pin another tarp, resting it under the front half. I mark my edges with a sharpie on the side, top, and back, and trim them clean. Last piece to pattern is the top. I pin this guy in place and cut the excess to line up with the other two pieces. Now that I have the base patterns for my head, I pull the templates off and label them before I trace them for new patterns. The only change I'll make is flipping and tracing both sides of the front of the hood on one piece instead of two. When I get all my new templates set, I make a rough design of my face shield out of paper, then trace and cut it out of the front head piece. For the see-through plastic of the face shield, I ended up repurposing material from a clothing rack cover that I had in the back. I pinned my template down and traced it with a dry erase marker, and also traced my seam allowance. Once it's all cut out, I finessed everything in place so I can pin it for sewing. Because this is the main focus of the costume, I went back over and put a few different types of stitches around the edges for aesthetic. Now that that's all taken care of, I can start sewing together the entire hood. The only fabric left that I have to cut out now is the backpack flaps. I just grab my foam core mock-ups, trace them with the seam allowance, and just cut them out. I sew these to their box-like shape first because, it turns out, there is one more thing I have to cut first. Before I sew the flaps, I need to make a hole. When you weren't looking, I marked where the foam core mock-ups rested on the suit's back and marked it with Sharpie. Again, while you weren't looking, I patterned this neck guard that connects the body to the hood. I sew that on before the next step. This is getting really crowded. It's time to pin the head on the rest of the body doing my best to make sure everything is lined up properly and there's hardly any mistakes. Even if it's not perfect, this fabric is great for hiding crimes. Everything's in place, so I sew the hood on the body. The last thing I do is pin and sew on the back flaps. And yay, it's all together, so obviously I have to give it a test fit. And attempt to relax. 
and fail. <laughs> it's a good start, but it needs to hold its shape. There's a lot of ways to do this, but the quickest way I found to do it with all the materials I had was use armature wire. I grab my stash of wire and end up picking a pretty thick gauge to make a rough head form. This will work well for the head, but I'm going to take a different approach for the backpack since I'm out of thick wire. Alright, I'm going to show you a neat trick. This wire is really thin and it's not really strong for what I need, but I have a lot of it and I want to make it stronger. So I'm going to double them up. A cool way to double this up, and this is a great way to make armatures for sculpting clay. You take two about the same length, run them close together, snip it off so you have just one continuous piece, then take a drill with no drill bit, insert your wire into the drill so it's nice and tight and close. This is better with two people with something this long. Grab one end with pliers and start drilling. And look at that. Nice beautiful piece of double twisted wire. And now this has some strength to it. Just keep in mind if you're trying to do precise measurements to make your cuts a lot bigger than what you're measuring for because this shrinks a significant amount. I take two sets of wire and bend them to the shape of the backpack. And just to make things simple, I duct tape them in. I'll have to dress Slender Man here up for the next couple steps. With both armature frames in place, I wrap the backpack wire around the hood wire. I want to make a wire frame to hold the face shield shape. So I make some more double stranded wire and shaped around my face shields template. Then I rough shape it around my hood before I get inside and duct tape it all in place. To close the suit up, I'm cutting up squares of sticky velcro and adhering them to the overlapping back seams. I decided instead of shaping the backpack with wire, I'll use 6mm Sintra instead. Sintra is PVC plastic you can buy in flat sheets. It has a spongy core so it's easy to score and snap and can easily be heat formed with a heat gun. I'm using Super 90 to adhere the Sintra to the fabric. When using this stuff, it's just like Super 77, but stronger. I spray both the fabric and the plastic, then sandwich them together and do the same for the other side. I'm going to use some Super 74 to adhere some extra foam padding to the inside of the hood. Super 74, unlike its counterpart, Super 77, is great for bonding foam and fabrics. Or if you're bonding foam to foam. I use it all the time to bond felt to foam padding if I'm making a felt line case. Bottom line, this stuff is great for bonding things with real porous surfaces. Just like with the Super 90, I spray both the fabric and the foam until they're tacky. Then I press them into place. I think I can put my suit on now. And for the final touch, I bought some chemical resistant gloves on Amazon. It fits great! Moving around, I have a pretty good range of motion. Well, almost pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Considering it's been years since I fiddled around with a sewing machine or anything to do with patterns, it came out great. But this one's just my first draft. While it's probably just as effective as wearing a face shield, by my standards, it's just a costume. So there's some improvements I want to make on my next draft. Firstly, I want to alter the patterns a little bit. So I have a smaller head, larger backpack, larger arms, and cleaner seams. If I use a tarp again to make it more airtight and firmer, I think I'll line the fabric with duct tape before I start sewing. And finally, other than to make it look cooler, I want to add a fan and a proper air filter in here so it's not as stuffy. Right now my face shield's fogging up and could potentially be a problem later. I plan on flushing out my design with the next one, then making a final, even better one after that. When I have a little better idea of what I'm doing. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm going to be a stereotypical YouTuber and ask you to hit that like and subscribe button. Or if you have any questions or comments, throw them down below and I'll be happy to respond. But for now... I need some fresh air.